Song of Songs, part nine. We now move into the verses of the song and naturally we begin with chapter one, verse one, which says, the Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. The opening lines here make it abundantly clear as to who the author of this song is. He is stating unequivocally that this is Solomon's own work, that he considers it to be the greatest of his thousand and five songs. The title is significant in the same way as God is depicted in Scripture as Lord of Lords, King of Kings. Solomon wants us to understand that this song is the song of all songs. There is such an expression of pride in this introduction, but it is not a worldly pride. It is a pride that through the song Solomon is able to express to the reader, whoever it may be, the unending love of God for all mankind and that all he has created. So who would not want to put their name to such an immensely spiritual work? The next verse, verse 2, says, Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your love is better than wine. This is the verse the maiden opens up the song with when she speaks. She's a virgin, a maiden from the ancient town originally called Shunem, but later renamed Shulam which is situated in the Jezreel Valley near to the Galilee district of Israel. The question of why did Solomon choose a Shulamite to be the maiden in the song can be found in the relationship Solomon had with his father. We have seen earlier that David advised his son and was obviously a caring father and we believe that Solomon admired and respected his father. Therefore, we are not surprised that Solomon would take an example from his father's life, which was King David's search for a beautiful woman to be his helper in his old age. Solomon's father, King David, had searched for a beautiful woman in Israel and with the help of his servants had found Abishag, who came from the same town as the maiden in the town of Shunem. Abishag is also called a Shunammite in the same way as the male maiden is called the Shulamite. The name Shulam in Hebrew has the same root as the masculine for shalom, meaning peace. In finding love and satisfying our hearts and soul, we attain peace and well-being. The area Solomon was writing about was in his time an area which was rich in vegetation and produced delicious wine. Naboth's vineyard was situated in the same area that the Shulamite tended her vineyard in, and it was Naboth's vineyard that King Ahab wanted to purchase. The maiden would have been familiar with the wine produced in that district and how delicious it was, and that is why she describes her beloved's love as more delicious than even wine. Today, the area still produces good wines from its newly planted vineyards. I've, see, I've seen the vineyards, and anyone visiting Israel can witness that the vineyards of this region are again being planted, and Israel is becoming a first-class wine producer again, as it was in the time of Solomon. In 2020, Decanter World Wine Awards, which are really the Oscars for winemakers, saw 18 winemakers from Israel win six gold medals, 31 silver awards, and 28 bronze awards. The maiden in the Song of Songs was familiar with tending vineyards in the 11th century BC at the time when Solomon was writing. As we will read through the song, she uses analogies with agriculture, horticulture, and seasons of the year. Animals, birds, and creations are used to describe her beloved and the circumstances of her life. The connection between God as creator and her desire for God, her creator, is announced in this first verse. 
Her first words immediately convey intimacy and desire for physical contact, almost a cry from her heart, which shows her intense longing for love. This longing points to a desire within man to seek a deep relationship with God. Almost all human beings have, within the depths of their soul, a desire and a longing to worship the God of all creation. But this desire is often hijacked, leading many to worship gods who are not gods at all, as they search for truth. The example of the Hebrews at the foot of Mount Sinai reverting back to worshipping a golden calf whilst Moses, their leader, was absent, shows this desire. The polarization of worship of the true God of Israel and Satan is the focus of the end times. Such is the power of the desire of man to worship a divine being. In this verse, the maiden's emotions are stirred and she enters into praise and worship of her beloved by describing his attributes. She moves forward in this praise of him. Your love is better than wine. Wine is a symbol of joy and gladness. The earthly joy and gladness does not compare to that of the joy and the gladness of heaven where there are no more tears and no sadness or mourning. Wine is also the sign of richness, of the millennial reign of Yeshua, when we read in the books of Joel and Amos of new wine. This will be a time of such blessing for the nation of Israel, as they live in the land God promised them, and eat and drink of the wonderful provision God has, has in store for them when their Messiah returns. The maiden's soul is longing for a time when the closeness and intimacy of her, her beloved brings forth a period of peace and bountiful joy, which can only be compared to heaven when the glory of God surrounds every moment of her being. Or is she longing for an earthly dwelling? when the king of the Jews will reign in majesty on earth, protecting every one of his chosen ones and providing for all their needs with blessing, joy and gladness. Does she believe that there is a coming time when old and young can sit in the streets peacefully with the shalom which can only be achieved by the presence of the mighty one in his temple? In Jerusalem. A lover's kiss is the result of a longing and passionate desire for intimacy. The moment before a kiss is filled with expectancy and hope of a deep, intimate relationship. Although a kiss can be long awaited, it can happen in a moment, even by surprise, with a twinkling of an eye. A kiss also changes the relationship with the one longed for forever in a way that cannot be reversed. An intimate first kiss of love is always a watershed in our emotional lives. Paul wrote about the moment of when Yeshua returns fulfilling the Feast of Trumpets. Our Saviour will appear in the twinkling of an eye and we will be gathered with him as if he were to kiss us and gather us to himself as a groom gathers his bride to himself. For the Jewish people, that moment as she's in the fulfillment of the Day of Atonement and the Feast of Tabernacles when he forgives all their sins, cleanses them and tabernacles with them in Jerusalem, in Israel in fact, for a thousand years. He becomes their king and is worshipped again in a new temple in the city of Jerusalem, which is the first time in thousands of years that Jerusalem again becomes the city of peace that it was once intended to be, and a dwelling place for the name of God. Returning to my comment that the word shulam in Hebrew is from the root shalom, meaning peace, I want to finish by saying that while seeking God and not finding him, 
we are always in a state of spiritual anxiety, not knowing what our future will be. But once we find him, we can truly begin to trust that he is our future in his hands and we can find true shalom, peace in knowing that he will all we will always reside under the shadow of his loving wings shabbat shalom mike fire